Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we'll be going over the markets. We'll be looking at a few charts, the Ethereum chart, the Bitcoin chart and looking at a few other charts as well and we'll be going over some news very quickly. Okay, I wasn't here on Friday. Friday was a nightmare day for me on Friday. Technology just kind of went to pot. Uh, I recorded, didn't record the sound, tried to get it sorted, it didn't work. Um, Facebook kind of banned me from instant articles. If you don't know, I've got another kind of business as well on personal development and I make money from articles and ads and stuff like that. So I lost an income stream, a big income stream from that that kind of supports this channel as well. Um, so I tried to get that sorted out. The website went down, <laughs> my website, my big kind of personal development website went down as well. Losing traffic to that was a nightmare as well. And it um, looks like Facebook have blackballed uh, my website as well. So that was a nightmare, plus Cote, um, there was FUD about Cote as well. Um, and I literally didn't get any sleep on Thursday night. I kind of found out about this FUD and I thought, oh, shit, I'm going to have to tell the people uh, recommended Cote too that this is going on while I looked into it. But Cote came out and dispelled that FUD and answered all the questions about that FUD as well, which was a couple of years old. But I literally <laughs> I went to bed, must have been about 11 o'clock and I was kind of awake. And I was uh, awake about half past two, half past three or something. I decided to get up at half past three uh, and just try and dig into this Cote. But Cote came out and um, kind of told everybody about the FUD and just kind of totally dispelled it and blew it out of the water. So I'm glad about that because I was kind of panicking there was going to be another bab when I invested, when I told people to invest in this. Uh, when I don't tell people to invest in them. I just advise that this could be a good investment. I still feel responsible, even though everybody's got the big boy pants on, big girl pants on, and they can do their own research, which I always tell everybody. But I still feel partly responsible for letting people know about it at least. So I'm glad that was over as well. So I just kind of walked away on Friday once everything went wrong. I just walked away and started again. So here we are, back again, brand new day, brand new month, and hopefully it will start to go up. From here as well for ethereum for bitcoin for the alts as well and i want to show you some of that first of all if you like these videos subscribe to this channel hit the notification bell and hit that like on the way out as well last one out hit the like please would be fantastic also leave a comment down below i love comments i love replying to you as well if you've got any questions or just to say these are great videos or these are crap videos whatever you want to say and also you can actually join a premium group and we're doing hidden gems in the premium group as well i'm just so i'm just going to jump over and show you the hidden gems just now this is on crypto compare there's one hidden gem missing from here, and that is one up because it doesn't recognize it. So this is a hidden gems, and it's assuming you put $1,000 each into each hidden gem I've called in the premium group. So I make calls as well as um, giving the hidden gems as well. So I do research on hidden gems. I give the video to the premium group about two or three days before it, and I let them know what it's going to be. Then I'll release the video to the free group and then I'll release it to YouTube as well. So, so far in this market just now, we've gone down over nearly $2,000 with Bitcoin. We are still up in the Hidden Gems calls, um, about $1,000 just now. So we've, we'd have invested $8,000 and we're still we're up to about $9,000 holding. Plus we've got the one up token as well, which is not recognized on Crypto Compare. We're probably up, I'd say another thousand dollars on that as well so invest in nine thousand we're up to eleven thousand so the ones that are doing well band protocol up 157 dollars chromia is not doing so well one ledger they've released or they've delayed the mainnet again so i'm not so sure about holding them um so i'm going to look at them they said it's going to be april the 30th but there's there's always delays but they've delayed it a couple of times so i'm going to read it um Concerned would be the word. Constellation still up as well. Ethereum still up. Cote is doing brilliant. That's went up 100%. Sharing is still up um, as well. So we've got a few that are doing good just now in this market condition. Okay, so if you want to join the premium group, there's a link down below. If you want to join the free group first, you can. There's a link down below for that as well. Okay, on to the markets. What's happening in the marketplace just now? We have an overall market capitalization of $248 billion at the moment. That's still the same, yep, it's gone up. Bitcoin is up 23%, V-Systems, REN, Chili's, Bitcoin Gold, ELF, Nexo, AION, Terra is up, and there's a lot of them kind of going up just now with the Bitcoin price going up. 
So we'll just see percentage wise, we've probably got about 75% in the green, 25% in the red. Kyber Network down 11%, that's had a huge run up over the last couple of months, doing brilliantly. Molecular Future down 11%, Power Ledger down as well, that had a huge run up as well. So some of these will be coming down uh, as well. Okay, let's check the Ethereum chart. What's happening with Ethereum? It's up to $224. Now, we're on a four-hour chart just now. So where do we expect it to go from here? Now, we've got a baseline. We're going to have a local baseline, which is a, a recent baseline here. Um, if it goes below that, then we'll need to rechart it and just see where it goes from there. And roughly, we've got a baseline of about $215. We can see that back um, from the 10th of February uh, all the way up to kind of 2nd of March today. So we've got a baseline there, that's um, strong support here. So it's bounced off that a few times back in the past and just recently as well it's bounced off that. So that's going to be our base for Ethereum. Our next level of resistance is going to be that 245. I'm going to say 245 there for Ethereum. So we're at 224 just now. So I would imagine that it's going to quickly climb to that 245 and either bounce down from there or jump um, over it and just break through that resistance and go on up to the next resistance level and continue its massive kind of rise from this $120 kind of stage. So or it could just kind of slide along there and trade in between $215 and $245. So it's looking good for Ethereum at the moment. Bitcoin. We have this is on the one hour chart. So what I'm going to suggest if you're looking to get in, if you're looking to day trade kind of Bitcoin, um, I would use the one hour chart. Or you could even go lower than that to the 15 minute. But the one hour chart gives you more confirmation. So the longer the time frame, the, the bigger the confirmation. Uh, not always the case, but you can trade on the crossovers. You can see you could have went short on the crossover at 9,800. Could have went short there and just got back out um, on the crossover to the upside at 8,600. So it's crossed over on the hourly at 8,600. That's the 7 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA. And it's now sitting at 8,726 and moving up. So it looks as if um, that is a good kind of bullish signal there, the crossover. Uh, we'll go to the daily here to look at that. We can see it didn't hit this long-term support line. So we spoke about that at 7,900. It didn't hit that. It could still come back down and hit that and bounce back off it, but it looks as if we're on the way back up. Again, on the daily, the 70 EMA has crossed down over the 50 EMA on the daily, so that's a bearish signal for me. So this might be a temporary bounce, and we could go back down here, but we'll just need to wait and see what happens there. And we'll look at it on the weekly. On the weekly, a bounce from the 50 EMA on the weekly, and we're still above this um, 50 EMA line, the 70 EMA is still above that on the weekly as well. So that's, there's bullish signals and there's bearish signals and we have to look at both sides. We can't just be perma bulls or perma bears. Um, we have to look at both sides because the market's changing all the time. So we have to change our charts all the time as well. For me, this line here is probably never going to change. It's not going to change for a long time. It's been in play for seven years and that's the support line. And we're kind of close to that on the weekly. Um, but you can see on the daily, we didn't quite hit it. So it's still looking, for me, it's bullish. There's more bullishness than bearishness at the moment for Bitcoin. It has been obviously bearish all weekend um, for the last three or four days, ha as have the, the rest of the markets. If we look at the rest of the markets just now, we'll just go to all the stock markets and gold as well. Peter Schiff is going to be pissed off because gold is kind of slid as well. You can see that big drop in gold um, from 1688 all the way down, it dropped 7% to $1,563. It's going back up again to $1,609, but it didn't escape what's going on across the world just now, globally, across the, the markets. Um, this is the FUSI 100. It's not bounced as hard as I thought it was going to bounce. And it's bounced below this long-term support line. You can see this is a long-term support line here. It's kind of gone below that before and jumped back up. But that's a long-term support line around about the 7,000 level and it's broke through that. So there could be more bearish times to come for the world stock markets. Dow Jones 
Um, you can see there 25,409. It did get down to 24,000. Okay, I want to show you this first of all. This is the 15 best performing coins of February with market cap $10 million or above. This is from ISO Analytics. I think this is quite cool actually what they're doing here. And um, this is from Twitter and I'll put the feed down below. So up 41%, we've got um, Tezos, that's kind of down at the bottom there of the top 15. And KSM is up 183%. So KSM is Kusama and has just kind of recently been released. And KNC is up 171%, that's Kyber Network. HBAR is up 162%. Power is up 135%. Orbs is up 99%. MX 97%. The Exchange OKB 77 Wax 69 UBT, WIC, DX, and NMR Link all up. Um, doing really well in February, despite February being quite a bad month as well. Okay, I want to show you some small caps here. This is 15 best performing low cap coins of February, and I think this is under 10 million. Um, Try is up 272%. OGN 184, MXC 129, RSR is doing reserve. That looks, I'm looking into that as well, 120%. VRA looking into that, 117. STPT is up 98%. PNK, Meta, AVA is up 73%, doing real well. Cote 70%. UPP, EOSC, Band, 51%, Suter, 50%, Anchor, up 48% as well. Bitcoin's still on track for massive gains after halving. So the Bitcoin stock to flow holding is strong. So this is from Plan B. So this is a stock to flow model, and I'll post links to, to this down below as well. But it's looking okay. The stock to flow is kind of on track at the moment. Um, and it's still, it's still on track for this $100,000 um, here. But... Um, Again, obviously, we'll wait and see kind of what happens there. So a lot of people still using the stock to flow model. Um, so the stock to flow model examines the relationship between the production of supply and the current stock available. Um, using this model, the analyst has predicted a rise to around eighty to hundred thousand dollars in the months following the halving. Previous events in 2012 and 2016 saw huge rallies in the years of fold, and many are expecting that 2021 could even be bigger for Bitcoin than this year. So a lot of people are still paying attention to that um, as well. So they're still thinking it could go up to $100,000. Binance integrates with a bank for the first time ever. So this is a tweet from Binance. First ever bank or first bank ever to integrate directly with Binance. Beginning today, users will be able to instantly deposit and withdraw Turkish Lira on Binance via desktop and the iOS app with the most competitive fees in Turkey. So this is Binance with Akbank. Um, big thing, Binance are doing big things despite what you think of them, despite um, kind of what other people are kind of writing about them as well. They're doing big things and they're getting the cause more and more into crypto as well. For me, I still think Binance are doing really well and I still think the Binance coin is going to do really well as well because of everything that they're doing here. Coinbase registers as second class member with JVCEA. So the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association and the official self-regulatory organization for the crypto industry in Japan announced on March the 2nd that three additional companies have registered as second class members, Coinbase being one of them as well. So other prominent Japanese companies have applied to obtain a crypto exchange operating license with the FSA, including the messaging giant Line. Coinbase, while as yet unsuccessful in Japan, did obtain an e-money license from the Central Bank of Ireland in October. The exchange also navigated the bureaucracy in the United States to register as a broker dealer with the Securities and Exchange Commission in June 2018. So Coinbase still doing their thing um, and still trying to grow um, despite all the regulations that are in place just now. And Japan could be a big one for them. Wall Street's meltdown caused the Bitcoin price drop, Mike Novogratz says. So global stock markets took a beating in the last 10 days of February. The S&P lost about 12% since February the 19th, marking its quickest correction in history. While the markets are still closed at the time of writing on Friday, February 28th, and marked another decrease of almost 1%. So Mike Novogratz has said, how did Bitcoin go from being a hedge against bad stuff to getting washed out and trading like a, a risk asset? When things go from bad to very, very bad, like they did last week, investors take leverage down as fast as they can. 
the book profits to make up for other losses. Ouch. So with a big fall like this across the the markets, across the world, globally, stock markets, Bitcoin, you've seen gold going down as well. What's going to happen is you're going to get a big bounce as well when people start to feel a little more confident and they start to get back into the market. So that is likely to happen quite soon as well. And we'll just go back to the Bitcoin chart and see it. Are we seeing a big bounce from here, from the 8,500 area? Is that a big bounce? So we're just going to mark. So it's gone from 8,500 to 8,732. That's not a big bounce. So it could be that it's just going up from here and it could, it could be a temporary bounce. So just be careful of that. Be careful. Though I'm bullish on Bitcoin, um, I'm not a permabull, but I'm more on the positive side. Um, but we have to look at the two sides of it. But just be careful. It has gone up just now and we're looking for more confirmation of that coming. Okay, thank you very much for watching today. Really appreciate your time. If you can subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell and last one out, hit that like button as well. And please leave a comment as well. It'd be brilliant if you left a comment and I could chat with you in the comments down below as well. And that'd be fantastic. And if you want to join a free group, there's a link down below. And if you want to join a premium group, there's a link down below to join that as well. Okay, until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now.